Uh, hi everyone, thanks so much for joining today's MSRA Fellowship Program talk, uh, the Computational Ecology and Environment Track. I'm Shu Xinzhong, a senior researcher from MSRA Machine Learning Group. I'm <coughs> I'm so glad to see you all today, uh, and I'd like to give a brief introduction about our MSRA fellowship program and our research in ecology and the environment. Uh, many of you may know that the United Nations uh, 17 goals of sustainable de development. Uh, many of them are related to uh, ecology and the environment problem. Uh, for example, the climate action, uh, the life below water, the life on the land, and so on. And many of, uh, and also most of them already have be, uh, the possible and the potential to become a huge di uh, di di disaster to human. For example, uh, Mr. Bill Gates' new book. Talk, uh, talks about how to avoid a uh, climate disaster uh, for human beings. In fact, uh, Microsoft also has amb ambitious com uh, com commitments for ecology and the environment sustainability. For example, our CEO uh, Satya Nadella, uh, Chief uh, Finance Office Officer Amy Hood, and the Chief uh, Legal Officer Brad Smith co-announced many commitments for Microsoft at January 1st, 2020, including but not limited by uh, Microsoft would become the pure uh, carbon negative by 2030 uh, and will remove all history uh, carbon emission by 2050 and, uh, and at least one billion uh, climate uh, one billion dollars for climate innovation fund and so on. And at the and at the end of 2020, we review our progress of those commitments. And here is a brief uh, summarize, uh, half summarization. Uh, I pick some highlights. For example, uh, we investigate of millions of dollars in many domains, uh, such as carbon negative, uh, water, waste, uh, and so on. We we provide uh, 10 uh, petabytes of environmental and uh, each uh, and Earth observation data on Microsoft Azure Cloud, which is the largest ecosystem data set in the world and is freely available. Uh, per Microsoft re uh, request, our supplier reduced their collective footprints by 21 million metric tons of CO2 emissions. And from these numbers, we could see that Microsoft is really responsible for social duty about ecology and environment sustainability. Next, I'd like to introduce the MSRA Fellowship Program. This program aims to inspire and empower best of the best junior PhD students. The fellowship offers a rich amount of uh, uh, scholarship as well as the opportunity for sorry, as as well as the uh, uh, opportunity for the internship at MSRA. Also, it provides. Uh, lifelong support to the fellowship receptions uh, on their career development. Uh, realizing the importance of applying computational approaches in science, since last year, my MSRA fellowship initiated a brand new track, Computational Science. In this track, we care about contributions made to traditional science fields with computational in innovations, including uh, the computational material science, the computational biomedic science and public uh, health, the computational physics and the computational ecology and uh, environmental studies. Um, we will talk uh, about the computational ecology and the environmental studies uh, today as well. Uh, the application deadline for this year is uh, June, June 30, uh, 30th. If you're interested, you still have uh, sufficient time to submit an application. Or if you are still in uh, er, er, earlier years of your PhD, you, could, uh, you can pay attention to the future program. As I mentioned, computational science will be our long-term plan. Okay, uh, 
in the rest of my talk, I'd like to briefly mention some uh, research uh, in MSRA about the environment. We mainly attempt to use you know, artificial uh, intelligence to improve two aspects of uh, environmental science, uh, i.e. environmental understanding and enhancement. Uh, this are, uh, there are many appli uh, applications in these two aspects, and we list a few of them here. Below are, below are more uh, fundamental technologies uh, are also uh, interesting. For example, the partial differential uh, equation uh, PDE function uh, PDE is the basis of many uh, many numerical models used for understanding and simulating the environment. Also, better molecular modeling is essential for many important applications such as material discovery, carbon capture, and so on. Today, I will pick three topics to talk. Uh, please attention, uh, today I would not talk too much uh, technical details, but just a briefly introduction, uh, introduce the topic. This is because that I think today's audience have very diver uh, diverse uh, backgrounds. Okay, the first uh, uh, work is AI for fast PDE solver. PDE solver is important and also badly time consuming. A straightforward idea is that uh, we can use artificial intelligence model, the uh, artificial intelligence model to learn a PDE solver. But just like the learning process of a human being, the AI model needs data, especially a lot of data to learn. So how to generate enough data by a numerical solver? So uh, it is uh, badly time consuming. Uh, so it becomes a chicken and egg problem. A smart solution is that uh, we can let the AI model to learn the physics of uh, to learn from physics directly. For example, we design a novel uh, contrast uh, con consistency uh, loss uh, for formulation for the learning process. In this uh, process, we can uh, uh, use this smart learning scheme which enables our AI model could learn from the physics directly, and the error will calculate by the physics directly and uh, go back to teach the to, to teach our model to learn better PD, PD solver. And this is an interesting result. We try to solve the Poisson equation with our model. Uh, it is uh, much faster this is the time column, and this is the relative error, uh, error column, and uh, our approach achieve um, much faster than the traditional uh, method, uh, traditional FDM uh, method, and also with lower relative error. And if we enlarge the mesh of the FDM um, method, it can uh, reduce the error, but the time will take uh, very long for calculating the PDE solver. Okay, uh, the next one is that uh, we try to use AI to accelerate a numerical model. This model is called CTM, which is a very widely used model in atmosphere science to model the process from emission to pollution. Uh, and it is also used in pollution and carbon control to design emission reduction scenario. Uh, for example, uh, we have an uh, original emission scenario. Uh, uh, for simply say, we only uh, take three emissions, for example. Uh, we have uh, uh, three emission uh, pol uh, pollutants, and we want to, uh, and we have 100% sorry. 100% the emission, and then we reduct the emission to a new scenario. And uh, how will it be uh, affect to the uh, atm atm atmosphere uh, uh, pollution? Uh, it would be calculated by the CTM model. But the CTM model is very uh, heavy to compute. For example, if we want to simulate one day, we need to, uh, one day situation, we need to take about uh, hours to calculate. But the uh, serious problem is that um, if we want to find a better 
a uh, uh, better scenario, uh, emission reduction scenario. Uh, we cannot only simulate a CTM once, but uh, we need to simulate millions of the uh, scenarios. A uh, uh, better uh, method is to uh, use uh, the multiple simulation results to uh, accurate uh, to approximate a very fine grained and accurate response surface. Uh, the naive pro uh, approach to approximate the fine grained uh, uh, response surface is that uh, we sample uh, the points in the scenario space and then simulate them by the CTM model uh, by multiple times. And then uh, we use a uh, approximation function, for example, R. It could be a polynomial function or a, a deep, learning, deep neural network function, so on. And the so, uh, state of the art method is that uh, we can use the polynomial function by using the interpolation or least square method to estimate the uh, response surface. But the problem is that the entire uh, so the process, uh, the complexity of the entire co uh, process is big O n, which means uh, the n is the uh, uh, the number of the samples, which means that um, we may need to uh, simulate. Uh, CTM, uh, CTM for uh, a thousand times uh, for only three emissions. But in the real world, we have more than tens or uh, hundreds of uh, pollution, uh, emi uh, pollutants. So we need to uh, simulate CTM for a hundred uh, millions or uh, even billions times. It uh, obviously it, it cannot be affordable. And in our work, we reduce the simulation time to only one. The, the, the complexity to only O a uh, big O one, which means that uh, we only uh, simulate the problem by one by one time, and then we can uh, uh, get the response surface. Okay, how to achieve it? Actually, the key insight uh, the key insight is a concept in the chemistry, uh, i.e., the chemistry uh, chemistry equilibrium constant K. Okay. For example. So from the original solution for each uh, given uh, external condition and the new uh, emission um, production uh, EP, then we use the CTM to simulate one point in the response surface and get the concentration of the pollution. Uh, but uh, we know that uh, uh, by the constant uh, by, by the constant KC, uh, which means that if the external condition is unchanged, then the concentration of the production is a function with respect to the concentration of the reactants. For example, here, uh, the concentrations of D uh, only, uh, con uh, only related to the uh, uh, func a function of the uh, concentration of reactions A and B, and uh, the constants Kc, and also a uh, relation function R. Therefore, we can decompose the CTM simulation by uh, using a baseline emission and the uh, reduction reduction ratio RP. For the baseline emission and the given external condition, we can use the CTM to simulate once to get the knowledge of the chemistry and the physics. Then, if we, reduct, uh, re we reduce the emission by uh, to some emission reduction scenario, uh, EP, EP prime, we can use the uh, R prime function to get the concentration of the pollution. And the R prime function uh, is a function approximation problem, which is very good at, uh, good by the, uh, which is uh, very, uh, very, very good for uh, deep learning to as the solution. Therefore, we use a powerful AI model to approximate the relation function R. So uh, by this way, we reduce the sample complexity uh, and the simulation complexity from big O n to big O one, which means that we only need one simulation to obtain the response surface for each day. Together with the advanced machine learning model, we can also improve the accuracy. Uh, for example, the error rate uh, from the 4.1% uh, is uh, declined to 2.5%. Uh, and uh, in fact, our works uh, our work makes a great academic and social impact. For example, uh, our paper is published on the uh, environmental science and technology, 
uh, and even U.S. Environment Prote uh, Protection Agency is involved in our work and try to apply our method to American data. Okay, in the last, I will introduce our very new uh, work about AI for molecular modeling. Actually, molecular modeling is a very important uh, problem to many uh, disciplines and uh, research directions. For example, uh, the drug discovery, uh, the carbon capture material discovery, and the model and modeling the components of uh, human bodies. And um, we make a concrete uh, example. Uh, for example, uh, the drug discovery. Uh, we show that how important the molecular uh, modeling is and in the drug discovery. In the conventional uh, method, a uh, virtual screen, oh, sorry, I, I, I use the laser points, okay. Uh, the virtual screening, the vivo testing uh, is used for the conventional uh, drug, di drug discovery process. And the entire process takes a very long time and very much money. For example, average development co uh, cost for a new drug is about $2.8 billion. The quantum chemistry uh, method, such as the density function theory, DFT, uh, would take an hour for a single mod uh, molecular property calculation. Is there a better way? Uh, recently, uh, the AI model uh, largely uh, as accelerates the progress of the drug discovery. To be more concrete, uh, since a molecular uh, is a graph, there is the graph AI model, or namely the graph neural networks, are used to uh, accelerate this progress. And very recently, we propose the most powerful graph model in the world, which is called the Graphformer. I'm very uh, exciting to share our latest news to all of you that the Graphformer just won an international uh, competition of molecular uh, modeling to uh, get the better uh, get the better of DeepMind and by and Baidu. This competition is held by the KDD Cup, which is a very traditional. Uh, uh, machine learning uh, computation and uh, famous com uh, computation uh, and famous co uh, challenge, and also held by the OGB team, which is the uh, uh, official uh, graph learning uh, uh, challenger uh, leaderboard team. And we win the uh, graph uh, graph prediction task, uh, which is aimed to uh, uh, predict the DFT calculate a homological gap a homological gap for given a 2D uh, molecular structure. Okay, and uh, Baidu and DeepMind are, are very strong co competitors for us. For example, the famous AlphaFold 2 is invited by the DeepMind, and Baidu also puts many efforts, many years, and many machines and many peoples for molecular modeling. And we uh, finally, uh, uh, fortunately, uh, we won the computation uh, for the first rank. Okay, so uh, what do we do uh, for the Graphformer uh, model? Uh, for example, uh, Graphformer model achieves the state of the art on many popular molecular modeling uh, leaderboards. Uh, for example, the OGB LSC challenge, uh, which is uh, just uh, mentioned by, by me. And the OGB uh, data leaderboard, uh, leaderboard and the, the Zinc uh, leaderboard. And uh, what we do, uh, actually, uh, we found that the transformer is the most powerful deep learning model. Deep learning model is a, a famous uh, machine learning method for uh, artificial intelligence. And the uh, transformer is the most powerful deep learning model in the world. Uh, actually, in many app uh, applications, the tra transformer model becomes a de facto standard. Uh, for example, uh, in the natural language processing, uh, for, uh, like the, the neural machine translation, the translation, pro uh, the translation uh, products uh, is, uh, is, is, is used for the NLP, uh, is, is used the NLP technology, and the transformer model uh, plays important roles in the uh, translation. 
uh, and also computer uh, computer vision, for example, the face recognition, uh, and also the t detection problem, the auto auto drive problem, uh, is the computer uh, com computer vision applications, uh, the applications of computer vision, and the transformer model has already uh, has also been the de facto uh, standard choice in the computer vision vision uh, computer uh, computer vision applications, and also speech. But uh, for graph learning, uh, the traditional and the conventional uh, graph neural network uh, is also has also been the dominant. But uh, for uh, with our work, the graph former, uh, you can find the or or papers link uh, right here. Uh, the transformer it has also become the dominant choice for graph learning too. Uh, it is not a trivial uh, method that we. Uh, apply the transformer to graph model, but it's very hard to 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 make the transformer works for works better for for graph. Actually, uh, there are many years uh, that uh, some researchers attempt to use transformer model to graph, but they failed. And finally, uh, we use some uh, structure encoding to help the transformer model to work well. Uh, works well. On the graph learning tasks, uh, and finally, expect for the molecular modeling. Graph learning is everywhere in our life. Uh, for example, uh, the uh, battery material uh, discovery, uh, which is very important for, <coughs> which is very important for the re renewable energy. And the social networks, and the uh, knowledge graph, and the traffic maps, and so on. Our new powerful model would bring huge uh, impact of this uh, to us, and uh, we are very happy to uh, discuss with you if you are interested in our work. Okay, finally, uh, thanks very much for your time. So, uh, said, uh, since that the uh, uh, MSRA fellowship program is open to junior PhD students, and if you are young, please pay attention to the future fellowship program. And if you will get a PhD degree uh, in recent years, please uh, consider to join us. We are very welcome uh, every every talent student to join our lab. At MSRA, uh, you can get the global collaboration and the, uh, the massive computation resource, the innovative uh, interdisciplinary research, and the chance of to, to pursue the frontiers pro to topics. A lot of things are not listed. Uh, this is just a part of the benefit. A lot of things are not listed in my slides. For example, unlike the 996 companies, we are very fle uh, flexible for the of the work time. Uh, if you can work from home, uh, any day, if as you wish, and you can get off work any time if if you wish. So, uh, if you want to join us, please kindly send your resume to my mailbox, shuz at uh, microsoft.com. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>